Hey y'all, welcome back to Holistic Flow. I am your girl, Lolo. And today I'm here to talk about, can you guess? I'm here to talk about natural hair, African-American hair, Afro hair. I think those are all the names for it really. Being that we just celebrated Juneteenth, hopefully we took the time out to just dive deeper into the histories and educating ourselves on systems that had led up to where we are in history today. I feel like it is very important for us to educate ourselves on all types of topics on Black history. There is a lot of information out there on the history of African hair, which then turned into the history of African American hair. However, over the span of centuries, perceptions of our hair have been misconstrued. Our hair has often been viewed as unattractive, nappy, unprofessional, and just too difficult to manage. However, in this video, I'm going to give y'all a little bit more insight about the perceptions of our hair from our ancestors and how our hair can help us connect to our spirituality. So first, let's take it back to the roots. Tribes in Africa were very large on expressing themselves through their hair. Their hairstyles would express different aspects of their livelihood, such as their age, their social status, their class, how much wealth they had, or whether or not they were mourning the loss of a loved one. For example, in the Wolof culture of Senegal, young girls who were not yet old enough to be married would shave parts of their head so that they could display that they were not yet old enough to be courted. Wearing intricate braiding patterns, wearing weaves, and wearing hair accessories such as shells and beads were also a large part of expression through hair of many African tribes. As a part of African spirituality, the belief was that since hair is the closest thing on our bodies to the sky or to the heavens, that their hair could help them communicate with their God or their higher power. However, this all changed during the beginning of the slave trade in the 15th century. During this time, our African ancestors were taken from the shores of Africa and their heads were shaved. Now, colonizers commonly said that this was for sanitation purposes. However, for the members of the African tribes, this was a part of stripping them away from their identity, stripping them of their social status, and taking away a large aspect of their spirituality. On the plantations, the slaves no longer had access to products and hair tools that they once had in their native lands. Because they did not have wide tooth combs, they had to use carding combs to groom their hair. Carding combs were the same combs used to groom the sheep on the plantation. Because of these reasons, they would often suffer from dry, damaged hair. Their hair would often get tangled and matted, and they would often suffer from infections of the scalp. They did start wearing head wraps to protect their hair. However, their slave masters always viewed their hair as ugly, nappy, and unkempt and they were often not allowed to wear their hair out, especially if they worked in the house. This period during slavery was a huge catalyst for hair discrimination and hair politics, which I could make a whole separate video on, but I'm gonna keep this video short. However, I would like to get a little bit deeper into how hair connects us to spirituality and how hair in general can help us sense environments around us. Let's first think about the functions of our hair. When you walk into a room that is colder than your normal temperature, you may notice that the hairs on your legs or arms raise up. This is because those hairs are sensing the change in the environment and the change in the atmosphere, and it sends messages to your body so that your body can react to those changes. You may have also heard the expression, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. When somebody is describing a situation that makes them uncomfortable, this shows that our hairs can also sense the presence of bad energy or bad spirits. This is because your hair is part of the nervous system and the nervous system is made up of the brain, the spinal cord, and all of its sensing organs. Therefore, you can think of the hairs on your head as an extension of the brain because those hairs sense changes in the environment around it and send that information to the brain. 
In a government study observed by psychologists during the Vietnam War, they proved just how much your hair is connected to your brain. During the Vietnam War, special forces searched Native American reserves looking for new troops to recruit. They were looking for men who knew how to move stealthily throughout their terrain. The men that they had found to recruit were documented as the most skilled in tracking and in survival. However, the researchers noticed that once the troops got out into their field, they started failing at the tasks that they were once documented as very skilled at. When the researchers questioned the troops about their lack of performance in the field, the troops consistently reported that once they had received their military haircuts, they could no longer use their sixth sense, they could no longer sense the enemy, and they could no longer tap into their intuition. However, before they were recruited into the military, they were very, very good at these things. And for a long time after the Vietnam War, the government hid this study from the general public. As a matter of fact, the Virginia psychologist who reported this information did not even want his name to be mentioned in the article that it was reported in. Hmm, very interesting. So now, knowing about the ability of hair to sense energy around the body, let's talk specifically about the wonders of natural hair. Natural hair ranges from all types of textures, from the loosest S-curl to the tightest coil or kink. Therefore, we can conclude that all natural hair takes some shape or form of the spiral. The word spiral derives from words such as spiralis or spira, meaning creation. It also derives from Latin words such as spirar, which means to breathe. Hmm, does that sound familiar? These derivative words also sound like our word that we use in English, spirit. Now the spiral shape in itself is a shape that symbolizes creation. The spiral shape is seen in many creative forms, such as in DNA, in the universe, and in the galaxies where the stars abide. The shape of the spiral is also a symbol of movement. When it's raining and you look at where the water is dropping into the puddle, it makes a spiral shape. The spiral shape is also seen in whirlpools, which is movement of water, and also in tornadoes, which is rapid movement of air. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. All of the preceding examples are all centered around the spiral shape or the S shape, which is the shape seen in natural hair. So you can relate our hair to a radio antenna and the fact that the spiral shape of our hair helps us connect with the energy around us and helps us receive messages from external stimuli. In terms of our spirituality, this can help heighten our sense of awareness towards the higher spirit and towards the spirits around us and the people around us. Our hair is the highest thing on the body and closest to the sun. Natural hair tends to grow towards the sun, upward, creating this afro shape. This does aid us in protecting us from the sun, but it also helps us absorb nutrients from the sun, such as vitamin D. And this helps us absorb other nutrients in the atmosphere, such as phosphorus and calcium. And because, like we said before, the hair is an extension of the nervous system, the nutrients absorbed by our hair travel to our body by way of the brain. And this has been shown to improve memory and our physical energy. In conclusion, our hair is not just a symbol of physicality or a symbol of status, but it represents creation, it represents life and movement, and it can help facilitate the energy around us and inside of us. Now, I'm sharing none of this information with you to say that short hair is not beautiful or that any other texture hair is not beautiful because whatever hair you're in and whatever skin you're in, you should love it and you should rock it. However, because of the history surrounding African-American hair, we have often been taught that our hair is ugly, that our hair is unattractive, and that we should manipulate our hair to look more like the colonizers' hair. When the colonizers got to Africa during the slave trade, they looked and saw how much time, how much energy, and how much spirit that African people put into their hair. And I believe that to be a large reason of why they took that away from our ancestors. Therefore, I don't think there can ever be enough emphasis put on the beauty and the majesty of African-American hair. And while we are in this time of 
educating ourselves and really getting back to our roots. I highly, highly suggest y'all do your own research on this topic. Like I said before, there's so much information on the history of African hair, the history of African American hair, African American hair in politics, hair discrimination, texture discrimination, and much more. Knowledge is power. So I will leave all the links to all of the sources that I used for this video, as well as links to other sources that you can read and watch to educate yourself further on this topic. So that is all I have for y'all today. I'm sending peace your way. I'm sending love your way. I'm sending joy to your family and friends. And I'll see y'all in the next video. All right, y'all. Peace.